Floss Tube. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Thursday, January 3rd at approximately 10.45 p.m. Eastern. And I'm coming to you with my first Floss Tube video of 2019. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you've had a really good 2019 so far. I was going to say 2013. Oh, my Lord. Um... But it is January 3rd, and <clears throat> today was my second work day for the year. Um, <laughs> I'd really like to say that, you know, I won the lottery and I don't have to work anymore because that would be great, being able to, like, be on my own schedule and everything. But I do have to work, and um, it's, it's going okay. I'm just trying to stay positive and just kind of keep my head down and keep plugging along. Um, but... I had a really good New Year. Um, my husband and I spent New Year's Eve at home. Um, I did a little stitching. I, as um, you know, <clears throat> I have the hands-on designs, a year of celebrations um, pattern that I had started the January one on. Well, New Year's Eve at about 1045, I actually finished the January um, pattern for um, the New Year. I don't have it FFO'd yet, but I will get I will get that get to that here in a little bit. So um, I took some notes for the show today, um, and let me just kind of glance through them. Um, so you also know that I am in the Garand Toten Bags Grime Guard of the Month Club, and last month um, for the Grime Guard Club. I won the drawing for the project bag that actually matched the Grime Guard. Well, today in the mail, I got the January Grime Guard of the Month. And I had messaged um, Gary and Ron from Garon Toten Bags uh, back and forth about various things. And I asked to be signed up for the um, 11 by 17 Grime Guard this month because I don't have a Grime Guard that, that, that's that big. And um, my Heaven and Earth Designs Four Seasons pattern is on a larger Q-snap because it's a larger project. And I haven't yet worked on my dowel rods for my scroll frame so I could actually put it on the scroll frame. Um, I've got to drill some holes on the end of the dowel rod so I can put the little screw, the little, I don't know what you call it, it's the double-ended like screw thing where you can screw um, wing nuts and stuff down on it. But um, I have to drill the holes in the ends of the dowel rod so I can put um, the uh, piece that you actually screw the wing nut onto so I can make a larger set of um, scroll frame rods for my scroll frame because I was hoping to put that on there. But the more I think about it, the more I think I'm just going to continue to use the large Q-snaps, at least for a while. Um, but anyway, my Grand Guard of the Month came today from Garon Toten Bags. I actually took it out of the shipping package to take a look at it. And I actually did open it up. So there is there is the um, the label. And I got the 11 by 17 Grand Guard. So um, I will take it out of the package and show you. This is a beautiful piece of fabric that they used. It's kind of wintry kind of Christmassy. Um, as you can see, it has a snowman. Um, it has little bird houses on it. So it's got snowman and bird houses and a cardinal, some cardinals. Um, friends forever. This is just really cute and it's an 11 by 17. Um, I have my Heaven and Earth Designs um, thing out here for you. I put it back. I had taken it off of the scroll frame or the, uh, sorry, the key snaps um, a week or two ago because I had bought the Sulky Sliver floss to grid with. I washed out the, um, the blue fabric. Um, I washed out the blue fabric um, marker because I noticed on a couple of my other pieces that I'd used um, the fabric marker on, it had stained the fabric and I didn't want that to happen. So I have gridded this with Sulky Sliver. This is the red, the shiny red. And that's where I've gotten so far on this. Um, so I am actually gonna show you the Grime Guard. So this is the Grime Guard. And this is the 11 by 17 Grime Guard. You can see my extra fabrics rolled up here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on here. All right, my extra fabric is clipped. 
because I'm working on the bottom of the piece. So if I take this off, just trying to get the grime guard on. Oh, that's gonna be plenty big for this. Cool. So this is my Garon 11 by 17 grime guard. Oh, this fits perfect on this. And it gives me enough extra space to hide the um, folded over. This is the rolled up extra fabric um, that I have. That's actually really wonderful. So, Garon Toten Bags, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the 11 by 17 grime guard for my Heaven and Earth Designs project. I'm going to really enjoy having the grime guard for this because my fabric is white. Um, so, and as you can tell, I am stitching this in the well, which means that um, the, uh, the back of the fabric is the closest to the surface. Um, I do do that a lot because I have easier access to the back of the fabric. I don't have to worry about my Q-snaps getting in the way of trying to hide the floss if I need to go in the back. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about the um, the uh, stitch stitch alongs um, and stuff that I am using with this. But thank you very much, Garon Toten Bags. I got my my uh, 11 by 17 Grime Guard today. This is going to work beautifully. There's plenty of fabric. Um, there's plenty of coverage on the extra fabric that's bunched up at the top here. You can see I've folded it over to put it on my Q-snap. But um, this is the lower left corner. This is where winter meets spring in the Four Seasons design. By Jessica Yerka. I've, I've shown this a couple of times, I know. Um, so just if you're new to my channel, um, this is the pattern that I'm working on. It's Four Seasons, it's Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by Jasek Yerga. And sorry my camera doesn't seem to want to focus, but... There we go. And my camera's going in and out of focus. All right, so... Thank you very much, Garon Toten Bags. I look forward to um, using the Grime Guard. I don't know if I'll be getting the 11 by 17 or the 8 by 11 or 11 by 11 Grime Guard next month. I haven't decided yet, but this Grime Guard will work perfect for this. Thank you very, very much. All right, so um, last month I had a new start. Um, as you know, by the way, here's the Project Garon Toten Bags project bag that I won last month, um, the Grime Guard of the Month. It matches that last month's Grime Guard. It's a very lovely project bag. There's like three projects and stuff in here. I'm, I'm loving the project bags. So um, if you guys are on the fence about ordering project bags or Grime Guards from Garon Toten Bags, go ahead and order them. These are wonderful, you guys. Absolutely wonderful. And this is my first ever project bag. So, um, last in November, um, right around Camp Got a Stitch, I ordered, I requested this through my local needle workshop. This is the hands-on design, a year of celebrations. It has 14 monthly patterns in here. It has two additional patterns down here for the Canadian holidays in July and November because Canada doesn't celebrate the same holidays that we do. Um, but anyway, I started and finished January last month. I finished January, the stitching on January, uh, New Year's Eve, about 10.45, and there is, let me go ahead and put this behind here, there is January. I'm still kind of on the fence about, I used um, the Given Flosses in here, the uh, Gentle Art Sampler Threads, Weeks Dye Works and stuff. The only thing I had to sub out was um, my Needle Workshop didn't have Weeks Dye Works Swiss Chocolate. Um, so I just picked a general art, general art sampler thread, and I'm using, um, or sorry, a, a different Weeks Dye Works color for it. I'm using Weeks Dye Works Pecan, and the Pecan is the arms of the snowman. So the arms of the snowman is done in um, 
Weak Star Works Pecan. 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 All right, so I finished that. And I'm, I was still on the fence um, a little while about how I was going to actually FFO this to hang it on the wall. Um, I kind of, I originally said that I was going to try and do it something similar to the way the hands-on design did it, where, um, you know, they can swap out the monthly thing on this clipboard and hang it up. Um, but when I was at Michael's, i got to find it now. There it is. Michael's had um, these... I'll find it later. But Michael's um, has these um, metallic um, tablescaping things, these little metallic boards. They come in a six pack and they're um, steel, like metal. And they have these two different hangers. They have the, um, the hanger here, or they have the stand that you can um, kind of stand it up on a table um, like that. Um, my husband and I went to Michael's, I forget when we went to Michael's, um, but uh, I think it was over the weekend maybe, or maybe it was even New Year's Day. And um, I bought a six pack of these for like 12 bucks. And um, I figured that this would be a good thing to magnetize the um, year of celebrations things, but I just wasn't sure how to, how to um, get this, you know, how I was going to um, mount this so it, I can magnetize it and stick it on here. But anyway, um, I was going through some of my scrapbook paper and I found this Let It Snow um, scrapbook paper. It's kind of a light, light, light blue and it has Let It Snow all over it. Well, I cut a strip off of the Let It Snow words. And then I found this other scrapbook paper I had. This is um, a six by six square from a sheet of scrapbook paper that I had. So um, I already had the scrapbook paper on hand. So what I figured I would do is, um, you know, the scrapbook paper, I'm gonna actually magnetize it. I have these little buttons that I magnetized here, these little flower buttons that I magnetized for the backs of some of my needle minders. And um, the other gray one kind of went missing in my tub just now. But anyway, so I would figure that I would use this and just magnetize the paper for the background right now. And then what I'm going to do is, since these are only like three by three, essentially it's, I'm not wrapping the fabric clear around the metal part. But anyway, this is kind of how it's going to be finished when, um, when I get the, um, when I get the uh, stitched piece um, backed and uh, magnetized, so basically it's gonna it's gonna look kind of something something a little bit like this. Let me get this folded folded in so you can kind of see, and I'll try my best to hold it. So essentially, it's gonna it's gonna be looking kind of like that. Um, and display it up on my wall. I'm going to hang it. I'm going to find, eventually I'm going to find some like different ribbons and stuff and tie bows and maybe get some other embellishments on here that I can magnetize so I can just kind of stick them on and swap them on and off. But um, this is what the January one is going to look like once I get it, um, get the stitch part um, mounted onto. It's probably going to be foam core um, and then I'll put a piece of mag uh, a mag a magnet or two on the back and kind of magnetize it. So that is actually going to be what my FFO for January is going to be. This month I'm going to start stitching on February and my goal is to every month I'm going to stitch on the next month's piece. So January I'm going to stitch on February, February I'm going to stitch on Marches, etc. And I already have some um, scrapbook paper to do the same kind of thing with. I might actually more fully finish this later at a later date but as of right now this is my goal i'm gonna you know like i said i'm gonna put some ribbons up at the top um get some cloth ribbons or some other ribbons and then i'm just gonna use this little hanger and hang it this um this will give me the opportunity also i can hang them sideways i can kind of do this um my husband liked the uh tag style of tablescaping hardware um a little bit better they had square ones um and the square ones I think were eight by eight squares. And he just said that these ones give a little more interest um, to the eye. So, I mean, I can do it that way, that way. You know, I can do them every which way. But at least this way, you know, I can pop them on and off really quick. So that is my goal. 
for soon <laughs> to figure out hopefully this weekend figure out how to fully um fully mount this and just get it on and get it hung up find some extra little things to decorate this with but there is what i've got and i did get this uh galvanized galvanized steel thing it was a six pack at michael's so i have a several of them to play with um i may at a later time take a couple of them and paint them um like you know do it like a white you know whatever like do four of them in different colors so i have four of them for each of the each of the seasons of the year i don't know if what i'm going to do yet i kind of like the scrapbook paper idea because i can you know swap out the scrapbook paper every month and you know it's not really that expensive um and the fact that it's magnetized is really great so that is what i'm doing for that all right <sighs> so um, that leads me to whip updates. So I just showed you my four seasons, um, heaven and earth design that I put my new grand guard on. Um, this is where I've gotten, I stitched a couple of, I stitched a little bit on it, um, yesterday and my plan was to stitch a little bit on it tonight. I don't know if I'm going to make it cause it is 11 o'clock and, um, yeah, so I think I'm actually going to pause and kind of listen to the news. So I will actually be right back and um, just wanted to give you an update that this is where I am at on my um, four seasons. And um, again, I will talk to you a little bit more about the um, stitch longs that I'm doing here in a minute um, once, once I come back from watching the news. So anyway, my next, my next up is a mid Amish life that I worked on um, New Year's Day or the day after New Year's. New Year's Day is when I worked on it. So I will go watch the news and I will be right back. So hi again, Floss Tube. Um, that was a short break. I just basically wanted to watch the news to get the weather for this coming week. It's going to be um, a little chilly, a little frosty. And tonight there is a meteor shower going on. I don't know. I doubt my husband and I are going to go out and drive and um, drive about 15 minutes north of town to get out of the light pollution here in Columbus to see the meteors. But I don't know. We may because um, that's kind of kind of our thing we like to do that when we camp and stuff I put my glasses back on um, I'm actually gonna take my glasses off for now um, but so my next my next whip to show you that I have worked on this is my second my first whip that I worked on for 2019 so far this year um, but this is my um, a mid Amish life piece I get this out and I will get the um, the three-parter out for you this is my version of it came um is in the cross stitch and country crafts magazine um april may june july august september it's in three issues of the um what year is it the um cross stitch and country crafts magazine um 1987 the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts 1987. This is what the Amid Amish Life piece looks like. It came in three pieces. The piece I'm working on currently is this one here. Um, you'll see it in just a second. But what I'm doing is I'm stitching all three of them on one big piece of fabric squished together without, without a space in between each of the sections. I'm just kind of squishing them together, make them, making them one long piece. Um, so that is Amid Amish Life. And, um, I had a before photo, but basically this is where I've gotten on a mid Amish life. I filled in, um, this scenery section right here, um, to the west of the house. And also I am working on the, um, the posts on this section of the house here, the white, um, and then I'm going to come down, I'm probably going to come down, um, do some, do some of the quilt here. And then also the, um, the lady, the, um, Amish mom and kid on the blanket with the, with the chickens or hens. Um, if you can see here, um, this is what, this is where I'll be working here. There we go. Um, I haven't done any of the back stitch on this. So, um, yeah, that is where I've, where I'm at so far. Um, 
I'm also going to be hopefully working on the quilt sometime this month, but you can kind of you can kind of get an idea. Maybe I don't know if you can get an idea, kind of an idea of where I might be at. There we go. Here we go. So um, anyway, this I pulled this out on New Year's Day to work on it. Um, so I filled in more of this this stuff here, the little scenery area behind the house right there. Um, I probably worked on it about an hour, hour and a half. Um, there's a little bit of confetti in that area. So that's kind of what I worked on. Alrighty. So that is my Amid Amish life. Um, I think that's about it for the whips. I haven't done worked on any Mill Hill um, kits yet this year. Um, you know, I'm participate, which actually kind of leads me into my next section, talking about the stitch alongs and everything that I'm doing this year. Um, I'm still kind of in the planning phase for my stitching projects and everything. Um, let me get this put away. Actually, um, I don't think I'm going to be stitching tonight. I'm a little too tired, I think. And uh, yeah, so all right. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to get my project back in the bag so I can close the bag up, put the bag away for the night. All right, so um, that kind of leads me into my plans, some of my plans for 2019. Um, as you know, I have a passion planner that I plan, you know, my, my weeks and stuff in. I'm kind of a little bit of what's called a memory planner or, you know, there's people that use those um, happy planners and Erin Condren planners and stuff. You know, they um, use washi tape and stuff to decorate. So I will show you. This is this week so far. Um, you can see I've used a couple of washi tapes. There's the polar bear, little polar bear washi tape and just some stuff to kind of decorate and write in my planner. Um, you can see here tonight, Thursday. Thursday is right here. I had bell choir earlier tonight. Um, this kind of just gives you an idea. I have a tracker here, down here, whoops, down here. I have a tracker for different things I like to do. These are just kind of me time things, you know, it includes like journaling, crochet, cross stitch, diamond painting, ocarina. I'm le trying to learn, teach myself how to play the ocarina. Um, reading, um, playing video games like Black Desert, The Sims, um, my 3DS and Switch, uh, Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, uh, <sighs> Um, Pokemon Go in Ingress, which is kind of hand in hand, gets me out of the house and gets me walking around. Um, Munzee and Geocache and um, working out. I've been kind of slack about working out, but um, anyway, so this is my this is my 2019 passion planner. Um, here is, don't mind the um, you know the this post-it notes, but here is here is my month of January and just some um, quotes and down here I've written some of the stitch alongs that are happening this month um, that I'm participating in that I may consider participating in I'm sorry the thing it doesn't focus really well but um so part of my thing for the four seasons um, heaven and earth design pattern is I am doing um, the uh, stitch talk 2019 Stitch Around the World Challenge. Um, it goes from January to December this year. And basically, um, don't mind all my little sticky notes. These are um, all the stitch alongs that I have found. But um, there's legs for the um, Stitch Around the World. The first leg is London to Paris, and you have to do 470 stitches. Each stitch is one symbol on your chart. Um, since I worked on the Heaven and Earth design last night, I did 106 stitches. So I'm 100 and, 106 stitches into the first leg, which is Paris to um, London to Paris. And what I'm going to do, um, this is just a blank page in the back of my um, planner. But what I'm going to do is when I complete each leg, I'm going to put the dates in the boxes for each leg completed. Um, you can get that. You can get this uh, stitch along downloaded um, the tracker thing downloaded it's a, it's a picture actually that I just printed and cut out um, but you can get that on the stitch talk Facebook Facebook group and I will um, link that here or link that below um, 
one of the a couple of the other things that I'm tracking this year in my planner that's kind of new to me is um, from Stitch All the Things they have planner downloads that you can get that are free and they're just um, Excel files or PDFs of um, tracker sheets. So I've printed off two tracker sheets from the Stitch All the Things um, website and they're a free download and I've kind of tweaked them a little bit. I tweaked them at work today because I was at a little downtime so I tweaked a couple of the spreadsheets at work but you can see here I have my stitching projects I just kind of wrote down some of the projects I know I'll be working on this year um, which includes the designer where I purchased them if I've kitted them and stuff and then I also have a whip tracker which um, I'm gonna track like what months I worked on what pieces and also how many stitches I put in each um, piece every month so I kind of know um, I'll know kind of at the end of the year um, how many stitches I've completed on each piece. I've never done this before, um, but I figured I would do this. So that is one of my trackers that I have for this year. Um, one of the other things I've added to my planner is um, a mood tracker. So here is a mood tracker, and you can see all the colors I've chosen um, for my mood tracker. Um, and the other thing that I've added to my um, thing is my husband and I are board gamers. So um, in 2018, I was going to try and play 10 board games 10 times each. Didn't come anywhere near where um, to completing the goal. We used to belong to the Columbus Area Board Game Society, or CABS as it is known as. And um, we were members in 2017, but we decided not to re-up in 2018 because um, we just weren't going. Their meetings are the first and third Friday and the second and fourth Saturday of every month. And we were only going on Fridays and because, you know, Saturdays were, were really busy. But uh, we were only going on Fridays and we weren't making, we were making less than half of the Fridays. So we were going less than quarter of the time that cabs had meetings every month or all year so um yeah we just decided not to re-up our membership for cabs but um we still have friends that go and we can still go it's just going to cost us five dollars a piece to go play games with our friends so i think that's kind of what we're doing for the next couple of years but i created a new tracker in my 2019 planner um for playing 10 games 10 times each because I know this is going to be a little bit of a stretch but you can see some of the some of the games that I put in here include Carcassonne, Trans Terraforming Mars, Ticket to Ride, any version, Robo Rally, it's an old 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 game that I really like to play, Bunny Kingdom which came out at Origins last year and um, Villagers which is a game that I kickstarted last year that um, we haven't received yet so I'm really hoping to get 10 games in um, 10 times this year. Um, I only have six games on this list so far. I'm still kind of meshing this out for this year. Um, I have room for 20. So if I have extra games that I play, I'll probably write them here. And if I play extra games that I'm not gonna track how many times I play, I'll just write them in this extra spot over here. So that's just some of the extra stuff that I'm doing in my planner. Um, I just kind of really wanted to show you my um, my whip tracking for stitching this year. Um, this is kind of what I'm doing, tracking my projects. Um, I also wanted to say that my first my first project on here that I have listed in my stitching projects. Um, this today I actually purchased a. Um, it was actually technically a free download, or as much as you want to pay download from Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Um, you can find it at wildvioletcrossstitch.com, I believe. And uh, they had a they posted a pat pattern on Facebook that was really really cute. It's called Sweater Weather. So I gave them five dollars and downloaded Sweater Weather. This is really cute. I don't have any fabric for it yet. It's a new pattern, so it went in. It went on my pattern tracker my project tracker for this year. I don't have anything marked. Um, I kind of marked down what date I purchased it. I, it's a PDF, so I marked that down. And um, this project tracker is also gonna track when I've kitted something up. And then this, this one will track 
when I when I actually started and and if I finished anything and everything like that. So um, the other nice thing about this is is I printed off several copies of these that I can cut out and washi tape in. So if there's if there ends up being more than what what I can put in this this grid, I can actually tape more on top and just do it like a flip a flip through of um, my trackers. So that is in the back of my passion planner. So you can see I kind of put them in sideways. Um, but that is what I have in my planner. Um, so for 2019, um, the stitch alongs that I'm doing, oh, and I'm keeping the new pattern. This is a file folder that my husband got in a box of stationary stuff that he got hoping to find some stuff for Christmas. This is just a little plastic file thing with Donald Duck on it. Um, I told him I could use it. He was going to give it away or something because he didn't really want it. So I'm using it for my new pattern that I got today. Um, I'm also going to be doing the Frosted Pumpkin Welcome to Pumpkinville stitch along um, or at least getting the patterns for it. I've just ordered the patterns and the fabric and the uh, Petite Treasure Braid and Needleminder for it. Hopefully I'll get those pretty soon, but um, that should be coming. Um, so for stitch alongs, I, as I told you before, I am doing the um, Four Seasons Jassic, by Jassic Yerka, published by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, that is for the 2019, uh, the Stitch Talk, it's Stitch Talk, Stitch Talk, Heaven and Earth Design Challenge Facebook group. Um, who is administered or yeah administered by Portia Parcher. She um she's the one that started the 100 Days of Heaven and Earth Designs challenge that I was doing last year. Um and some of the other challenges the 90 Day Hate challenge and all that. Um this piece, however, she started um this thing that started January 1st and it's called the 2019 Stitching Around the World challenge. Um I showed you the tracker for it. This is my piece for the Stitching Around the World Challenge. So um, hopefully every leg I finish will make me closer, bring me closer to finishing the piece. Um, that is one of the things I am participating in this year um, for sure. Um, I'm already signed up and I'm already kind of actively stitching that. Um, there's a couple other stitch alongs that I am hoping to get into. One of them might be that Frosted Pumpkin, Welcome to Pumpkinville. Um, the first pattern comes out the 15th, and then I believe it's the first of every month after that. Um, so that that should be kind of kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to getting the fabric for that and to getting the first piece for that. I don't have anything to show you, but you can go to the Frosted Pumpkins website and um, check it out. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, so there's this um, Orny Cell like ornament cell um, blog. I don't know who who does it. I didn't really dig around too much, but it's like orny cell twenty twenty eighteen dot blogspot dot com or something like that. Um, they've listed a couple of different um, twenty nineteen um, stitch alongs for the entire year on their um, on their blog. And I guess these ones carry over from year to year to year. But um, one of the ones that they have on their website, as you know, I was going to attempt to do the um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch 12 Days of Stitchmas for the 12 Days of Stitchmas stitch along that started December 25th. And it's still going on until like the 6th of January. Well, I didn't start it. And um, anyway, this blog, um, this ornament sal blog, um, I'll put the links below. Links to everything are, will be below in the description. But they've listed out um, three different cells based on the 12 days of Christmas, um, Christmas carols, and um, ornaments from the Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issues, previous Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issues. I believe it's from 2001 to 2010. Those are the issues that they're using. So for... Um, January for this ornament cell, the 12 days of Christmas cell that they're, they have posted is partridge in a pear tree. So this will be the perfect opportunity for me to actually start the caterpillar cross stitch um, 12 days of stitchmas. So I can just, you know, kind of focus on um, the uh, 
first ornament on the on the tree for that. Um, the Christmas Carol um, or Christmas song stitch along that they have going on. January is Blue Christmas, and I don't know if I'll participate in that. I may. I don't know. Or something. I'm assuming it's something blue, something Christmas. I don't know. Um, I haven't really kind of read into that one. Um, and then the other one that they're doing is um, the ornament cell from Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issue magazines for um, different years. So January's this year is um, the Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issue from 2009. You can pick any ornament from that issue and stitch it for the month. Or you can pick all of the ornaments in the issue and stitch it for that month. But this month is the Just Cross Stitch 2009 Ornament Issue. Um, you can pick any pattern from that. I don't know if I have the 2009 ornament issue in my collection. If I do, if I have any of these um, ornament issues anywhere, um, I may actually join in on that stitch along. That sounds kind of fun. It would give me more ornaments for my tree. Did I write those down in here and put them in here? There's the obvious like stitch mania. Um, yeah, I don't think I wrote any of those down. Did I put that in February? I might have. Oh, there we go. It's the Christmas Orny Sal blog spot. Christmas Orny. It's Christmas Orny 2015sal.blogspot.com. I'll put that link down below. But um, so they have the three. They have the three. Um, three sales going on. They have the 12 days of 12 days of Christmas sale which is, you know, um all the different 12 days. The 12 days based on the 12 days of Christmas song. Then they have the um the uh Christmas carol. So February is Holly Jolly Christmas. March is Angels We Have Heard on High. April is First Noel. May is Joy to the World. June is A Free Choice. Uh, July is Let It Snow. August is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. September is Oh Holy Night. October is I Saw Three Ships. November is Jingle Bells. And December is A Free Choice. Um, based on some of the whips that I have, I may actually um, be participating in some of the Christmas Carol ones. And then, so the um, ornament, uh, Just Craft Stitch ornament issue, um, stitch along that they're doing for this year. Um, January is 2009, Just Craft Stitch 2009 issue. Um, February is 2008. March is 2007. Um, April is 2002. May is 2000, 2001. June is a free choice. July is 2006. August is 2005, September is 2010, October is 2003, and November is 2004, December is a free choice. So you can go to um, their website, their blog, and um, you'll see the uh, stitch alongs listed on the right hand column. It'll be kind of down the page a little bit, but they list um, the stitch alongs for 2019. There's three of them that they they have going on. Um, I don't know how how many people actively participate in them. Um, I just happened to come across it yesterday when I was googling something else. Um, there's the tour de designers stitch along. I may not participate. I likely will not be participating in every single month. But um, for instance, January is Jardin Privé. Um, I hope I said that right. That's the designer. February's designer is Fiddlesticks. March is Satsuma Street. I have a Satsuma Street or a couple of them that I could start. Um, April is Long Dog Samplers. May is Heaven and Earth Designs, which happens to be Stitch Mania as well. So, you know, and I, I'm doing that um, stitching around the world. So, um, yeah, I may do that. June is Ink Circles, July is Ingleside Imaginarium, August is Tilton Crafts, September is Stitchy Box, October is Beadwork or Blackwork Journey, November is Bent Creek, and December is Doreen Jones. So some of these stitch alongs I may participate in as an you know kind of 
as as they happen. I I'm not committing to any one particular stitch along all year, except for the stitching around the world challenge. Hopefully, I'll finish it. Um, but we shall see. So those are some of my plans. Obviously, I'm going to be doing like you know Mill Hill Monday, Friday off the grid, Sunday high tea, dark thirteen stitch along, which is anything kind of dark and you know ghosts and. Uh, Ouija boards and everything like that you stitch on the 13th of every month full coverage projects on the 5th of every month there's whip Wednesdays uh, Mill Hill Mondays I think I already said um, the year of starts um, every 19th of the month you start something new Sunday high tea I haven't really figured out what my Sunday high tea this year is going to be um, Carolyn said Carolyn Hoff from off the grid needle arts she said that her sunday high tea is changing this year last year she was starting something new something kind of really cool every last sunday of the month but for me this year i don't think i'm stitching it so my drink of choice tonight is bijlo cinnamon stick tea and i have this nice little cute little hello kitty mug um I have a subscription to Sanrio Crate, which is a Hello Kitty subscription box put out by Loot Crate. Those of you kind of into geeky things, you might know Loot Crate. It's a monthly subscription box where you get all kinds of geeky, geeky nerdy stuff and video game stuff. But I have one for Hello Kitty and this was the mug that actually came in the most recent um, Sanrio box that I got. It has little twin stars and Karopi and Hello Kitty, and it's just, it's just really cute. So, one of the other things that came in the subscription box that was also really cute was I got this cute little Hello Kitty pillow. It's so cute. I like it. It's a little, little snowman Hello Kitty pillow, and it's real soft and really cute. So, yeah, that's what came in my Sanrio crate. So if you go to lootcrate.com, you can see um, Sanrio Crate. I'll put that link below for you as well. Um, so other than that, I really don't have much going on. Um, oh yeah, one of the other th one of the other stitch alongs that um, that I'm hoping uh, will continue throughout the rest of the year. They said they would. Um, the International Hermit and Stitch Weekends. IHSW International Hermit and Stitch Weekends are starting back up again in 2019. The first one is coming up on January 18th through the 20th. That's basically where you kind of just keep your jammies on and sit and stitch all weekend. Um, it's usually the third weekend of the month. Um, that's when when they try and have it. They try and put um, uh, event events on Facebook um, for each of the weekends for the year. Um, so I will actually put that information below for you, but basically it's just like your excuse to do nothing but stitch that entire weekend. So that should be kind of fun. Um, I was actually really hoping that Teresa, the kitten stitcher, um, would bring back her, um, slumber parties. She tried, um, a slumber party type stitching event last year. Um, September-ish, I think, maybe, and, um, I don't remember exactly when, but basically, you know, it, it started on Friday afternoon sometime, and everybody around the world who ever wanted to participate just put on their jammies, started stitching, you know, people turned it into stitch nights where they got together with a group of friends, and everybody hung out at somebody's house in their pajamas and their sleeping bags, and they made popcorn and watched movies and stitched and stitched and stitched. It was a slumber party, essentially, and it, it it was virtual, whatever. I was really hoping that she would kind of get that kick-started and that more of them would happen, but I think it, the idea kind of got dropped. I really hope that idea comes back. So if anybody out there can um, get in contact with the kitten stitcher, Teresa, and kind of put a bug in her ear that that should come back. That would be great. I would, I would participate in that again. It was fun. I actually did it by myself, but I was, you know, I was online kind of watching a couple other videos and stuff. And I was just stitching along, um, at my in-laws house that weekend with the supper party people. It was great. It was really good. I think, um, Teresa, 
should bring those back and post them. I think that would be great events to get involved with. And those, I think, were supposed to be the third Friday of every month. So that actually kind of coincides with the International Hermit and Stitch Weekends, which is the, la the third... Um, the third weekend of every month. So if she can kind of coincide with that, it's the International Hermit and Stitch Weekend and Cross Stitch Slumber Party, I think is what Teresa called it actually. So that would be really good if those could come back. Um, so I showed you my planner trackers. I kind of went over that. And one of the other things that I started, so a lot of you um, keep a hold of your orts from your stitching every year. Um, and some people don't know what to do with their orts. And some people just keep piling on their orts and piling on their orts. They have containers full of orts. Well, there's a couple ideas that are really kind of fun. My local needle workshop, actually, every New Year's Eve, they gather orts that people donate to them, and they put all the orts in this big ball. And they have an ort ball drop at midnight. So it's like a stitch night. Everybody gets there between 6 and 9 p.m., and you sit there and stitch all night, and then around midnight, they do the countdown and they drop the ort ball from the ceiling. I will actually link, um, I will actually link their ort ball um, feed on Facebook that they posted um, down below for you, so you can watch that. It's actually kind of fun. But some of the other people, um, really good suggestions. I've been kind of doing this most of the year this year, but what a lot of people do with their orts, and I found out that ORT stands for Old Ragged Thread. That's what ORT stands for. Um, they've been putting their orts in little glass Christmas balls. So this is my ORTament. They call them ORTaments. This is my ORTament for 2018. I wrote at the top. I can't find my silver cap with a, the ring in it that would fit on top of this right now. Um, so I may just use the one I pulled off for this year's ornament on this one, but my goal is to uh, eventually get um, paint, like glass paint or whatever, craft paint, and you know write something on here. Maybe put some little snowflakes. But here's my here's a ball of my orts from 2018. That being said, I went out on New Year's Day since I was stitching New Year's Day. I pulled out one for. 2019. So here's my ort ball, and you can see, or maybe you can't see. It's gonna be there's gonna be too much of a glare. But maybe if I pull some out, you can see there's some orts in there. So I have actually started my 2019 ortament. So if you're wondering what to do with your extra bits of floss that you cut off when you're done with the color. Ortaments. You can go to your craft store and buy, these are glass. I'm using glass ones. You can get them in any shape. You can get them any size. You can get super big ones. I may actually go get a set of big ones. I don't know. Um, for orts. But, um, yeah, you just drop your orts in here once you fill it up. You can hang it up, you know, write the year on it and craft paint or whatever. Put your name on it. Hang it up on your tree. You can get you know, stitchy ornaments that way. It's really kind of cool. So yeah, um, it used to be a long time ago that people would take their orts and save them up and then stick them outside for the birds to use. But I've heard in the last five or 10 years that doing that isn't exactly a good thing for the birds. You know, they use them to build their bird nests and stuff like that. I don't know if it's because of the dyes and the, and the floss or whatnot, but you know, I don't know how good how um, good for the environment that is but you know if that's what you want to do you know go ahead and do it I'm sure the birds this time of year could use some warm stuff to do it if anybody has any comments about that though just leave them below I don't I don't mind people you know being um, giving some constructive feedback about um, the idea of using your orts to um, put outside for the birds and some of the animals that may need them to build nests and stuff like that. If you know why that might not be a good idea, um, be sure to comment. I'd love to, I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, I'm doing personally. I'm gonna stick with doing the ore balls because I think that's kind of cool, and you know it gives us a little more things to hang up. And uh, you know instead of putting these on my Christmas tree, I may actually hang them in my craft room every year, and you know 
keep them hanging all year round. Um, so that's about all I have for you today. It's about 50 minutes. I wasn't expecting this to be this long, but, um, this is my first video of 2019. I hope everybody's had a happy new year so far. Ours has been pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say it's been stellar so far, but it's been, it's been pretty good. I'm trying to keep positive and keep my head up and I'm pretty sure that 2019 is going to be better than 2018, but, um, yeah, we'll just keep it at that. 2019 is going to be better than 2018. Um, nothing else is going on. Um, I'm still not really, I haven't nailed down a specific plan for my, um, floss tube channel yet. I don't know if I'm going to do it vlog style, like where I do snippets every day and give you updates if I have them or not updates and then just upload the entire weekly video at once. Or if I'm just going to do something like this and do one, you know, long video for you, um, with all the updates all at once. Um, I don't know what my time is going to entail. Um, I know with the bell choir at church, we're gearing up for our, um, concert the end of February. So we're going to be practicing a lot for that. Um, as far as travel, I don't know how much traveling my husband and I are doing. I know we're planning on doing, um, Christmas in California next, this, this year. And also my, um, 30th class reunion is coming up this summer. I don't know if I'll make it out to California for that or not. Um, it's still kind of up in the air. It just, um, really depends on, um, some other things going on. Plus my mom is wanting to come out here for a week or two. So I'm going to need to take time off and spend time with my mom, um, which will be fun because she's kind of into crafts too. Um, I am going to Camp Goddess Stitch this year. My husband has told me once they start taking payments, just go ahead and start making payments on it because he said that I had so much fun at it that, um, he really wants me to go. So I'm going to go to that again this year. That's going to happen in November sometime. They haven't announced a particular date yet. It may actually be October, um, like end of October, but they haven't announced officially a date yet because... They have it nailed down, um, the hotel information as of yet. Um, the location is changing this year, but they haven't nailed down. Um, it's going to be still in Berlin, Ohio, but they just haven't, um, nailed down specific dates yet. Um, they'll, they should know that in a couple, in a month or two and be able to give that information out. So if you're interested in coming to Camp Gotta Stitch, um, you can contact Cross My Heart Limited, um, which is my local needle workshop here in Columbus, Ohio. And they can get you the information or put you on their list. Um, I will put their contact information below. So anyway, that's all I have for you tonight. Um, it's about 55 minutes. Hopefully it won't take too long to load. I'm also toying with the idea of not putting in um, the little headers and um, the title, the title page essentially and stuff like that before my videos. I don't know if you guys even really care. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of toying with just, you know, coming on and stitching or talking to you, um, just because I don't know, um, having a little intro is fun and stuff, but I've been trending, not putting music in them just because, um, yeah. Anyway, so again, it, it kind of goes along with kind of changing the format of my floss tube video a little bit. Um, if there's something that you'd like to see. If there's some questions that you like, you'd have, if there's, um, some other stuff that you want me to talk about, um, just let me know in the comments below. I don't have any updates on diamond painting. Um, I did contact DIY moon shop to find out what was going on with my order. They told me it would be two to three weeks out. It's uh, I'm on my fifth week waiting for the order. And I've actually been in contact with them, um, yesterday and today. They're really good in, even though they're in the Philippines, they are really good about getting back to you. So if you're looking for some diamond painting um, kits and supplies, check out DIYMoonshop.com. DIYMoonshop.com. I will put their link below. Um, the one owner, Reggie, he's been in contact with me about my order. And they, oh, excuse me. There's a couple bookmarks for my planner. I have an axolotl or a little bunny, the rainbow, and an axolotl. Let's go with my planner. But, um, 
they've been in contact with me about um, some of the issues they've been having with my order. The one canvas that I ordered, um, the canvas they had in stock was actually really badly damaged and they didn't want to send it to me. So they had ordered another one. That came in today. And there was, there's two other ones that might be, might be um, delayed until the end of January. So my order probably won't come in until like early February. But I'm hoping that, um, you know, because of the holidays, you know, shipping is a little delayed and stuff. I'm hoping that, um, you know, they get the kids in really quick and they can get my order shipped. They um, usually put up a, a vlog on YouTube about packing. They pack all their kits. They check them out. They check the canvases for, um, you know, bubbles and stuff like that. And they check all the beads to make sure you get all the beads. So they actually go through and do the um, QC on the, um, on the kits that they sell. To everybody now their shipping is a little pricey their shipping is forty dollars but they check every kit they pack they package all your orders in individually so if you have a large order of six kits all your kits are in one box and not each kit is not in its own box and then so what they do is if they put if they if you have two or three boxes because you order so much stuff they take all three of your boxes or however many boxes you have, they take them to the post office there. They put them all in one big box and ship it to you. So it's usually, they're usually double packaged and um, that way, you know, if the outer box is crushed, your goods come directly to you. That is why their $40 shipping is so high because they do take the time, they do check it. It's well worth the money, you guys. They, they're customer service is just spectacular and um, you know just the fact that they go th to such lengths to ship your packages um, is really outstanding and you get to see them package it up on their vlog so I've been kind of watching their vlog trying to see you know when mine's gonna come I thought it would I thought it would have been here by now but you know they've had to order some supplies for it so when I do get that I will be doing a diamond diamond painting unboxing video for my DIY moon shop order um, but other than that, yeah, I don't have much else going on. So anyway, I hope you guys have had a really good New Year so far. And um, that's all I got. Until my next video, I hope everything is goes well. And um, I will see you guys soon. Keep on keeping on and uh, take care and have fun. Enjoy the New Year. Bye.